Let's talk about basis and dimension. Can you express any vector in R2 as a linear combination of 1, 0, 0, 1? Yes. For example, 5, 7. Uh, that's going to be 5 times 1, 0 plus 7 times 0, 1. So really any vector in two-dimensional space in R2 is a linear combination of 1, 0 and 0, 1. Can you express any vector in R2 as a linear combination of 1, 0, 0, 1 and 5, 12? Yes, but 5, 12 is unnecessary because 1, 0 and 0, 1 already span R2. So you don't really need to throw in the 5, 12 there. In some situations, we are looking for the smallest set of vectors that spans Rn, or a subspace of Rn. We call such a set a basis for Rn, or for that subspace. In the above example, 5, 12 can be expressed as a linear combination of 1, 0, and 0, 1, so it's not needed. Vectors which can be expressed in terms of other vectors in the basis are not needed in the basis, because a basis is as small as possible. It's lean. It's mean. To make this set as small as possible, we need this set to be linearly independent. Recall the definition of linearly independent. A set of vectors is said to be linearly independent if no vector can be written as a linear combination of the others. So here's our formal definition of basis. Let H be Rn, or a subspace of Rn. A set of vectors is a basis for H if it spans H and it is linearly independent. Every basis of H has the same number of vectors. We call this number the dimension of H and denote it by dim of H. Any linearly independent set with this many vectors is a basis for H. For example, find a basis for R3. So again, we want to be able to express every vector in R3 as a linear combination of these, and we want it to be as small as possible. Well, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. This is the standard basis for R3. These are the vectors E1, E2, and E3. So it's linearly independent. No one of these vectors can be written as a linear combination of the others. And it spans R3. Every vector in R3 can be written as a linear combination of these. Determine if 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 10, 15 is a basis for R3. Well, R3 is three dimensional. So any linearly dependent set with three vectors is a basis for it, because the dimension is three. Let's show that this set is linearly independent. The rows of a square matrix, uh, A, are linearly independent if and only if the determinant of A does not equal zero. That's the theorem that we've seen in the book. It's, it's, it's monster theorem. It's got lots and lots of statements which are logically equivalent to the statement that A is invertible, and these are two of them. Okay, so let's show that the determinant is not zero. When you calculate the determinant of this matrix, you get negative three, which is not zero. So this set uh, is linearly independent. In other words, the set of uh, the rows, basically the row vectors, that's linearly independent. So yeah, it's a basis for R3. Determinant, this is a basis for R3. What do you think? No, it's not, it doesn't span R3. You can't express any every vector in R3 as a linear combination of these. For example, you're never going to get 0, 0, 5 as a linear combination of those. Determine if uh, these vectors, if this set of vectors is a basis for R3. Well, it's not. It's linearly, it is not linearly independent. It's linearly dependent. Again, a basis for R3 has to have three vectors. If you have four vectors, that's too many. It's got to be linearly dependent if it has four vectors. Find a basis for the solution space of this system of equations. Okay, we know how to solve this. We get it in matrix form, and they get it in reduced rational form. And we end up with this in reduced rational form, which corresponds to these equations. x1 minus x3 minus 2x4 equals 0. x2 plus 2x3 plus 3x4 equals 0. Great. Uh, let's, uh, so again, here are the equations. Let's write this as x1, x2, x3, x4. Uh, so we end up with this first equation, the second equation, x3 is x3, x4 is x4. So we can write it as x3 times this vector, uh, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, and uh, plus x4 times this vector, 2, negative 3, uh, 0, and then, and then 1. So notice we have a linear combination of those two vectors. Any multiple of these two vectors is going to be a solution. The basis is thus this. These are what we call the canonical solutions to the system of equations. Every solution is a linear combination of these, and every linear combination of these is a solution. Find a basis for the null space of this matrix A. Now, this is the same matrix A we just saw a moment ago, right? 
Okay, the null space is the set of all vectors x such that ax equals 0. But ax equals 0 really corresponds to this system of equations that we saw, you know, that we saw just a moment ago. And so our basis for the null space is going to be these two vectors. Let A be an M by N matrix. The column space of A, which we denote by column A, is the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A. It is a subspace of Rm. The pivot columns of A form a basis for the column space of A. So here's what we mean by that. Okay, find a basis for the column space of A equals this matrix. I can try to find a basis for the column space. So this would be a basis for the set of all, yeah, the column space is the, again, as we saw a moment ago, the column space is the set of all linear combinations of the columns. And we're trying to find a basis for that. Okay, the reduced rational line form looks like this. So notice these are the pivots, one and one, those are the leading ones. So these are the pivot positions. These are called the pivot columns. And a basis for the column space of A is going to be not these two columns, but the corresponding columns in the original matrix A. So 1, 2, 5, and 1, 3, 7, those, uh, yeah, those, so basically those form a basis. Yeah, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 7, that forms a basis for the column space of A. I note that these are the columns of the original matrix A and not the columns of the reduced row echelon form of A. So be careful with that. Find a basis for the vector space spanned by this. Okay, this is the problem we saw just a moment ago. It's a basis for the, the column space of this matrix. So basis for the column space spanned by that, you know, we make the columns of the matrix, find a basis for the column space. We just did that above. The basis is 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, 7. Same problem.